It's like if you smoke, it gets on your clothes. Yeah. If you poop, it gets on your carpet. <laughs> like it's just like the well, scent. I don't know about and, that. I don't know how and, you poop. <laughs> Brunch, hit it, boys. Here's a scorching hot take for you. Okay. I don't think that that movie where the puppet comes everywhere is going to win any Oscars. No? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I We saw uh, Happy Time Murders, and it was a million times better than I thought. Same. Same. Uh, it, was it was very was bad. bad. <laughs> it was very bad. I thought it was going to be the worst movie ever, and it ended up being uh, very bad watchable like i got up for a little bit took a break uh <laughs> but it was overall it was overall bad which is a uh that's a major that's a that's a real coup for that movie yeah so i triumph. i actually i proposed this idea to you probably last week i was like we should do some sort of rating system where the 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 ratings are literally very bad mm-hmm. bad fine yeah good very good and like amazing or something. Yeah. Uh, and then you can throw in piece of shit of the year. In there. Yes. Like I was expecting this movie to be piece of shit of the year yeah. or, or at least in contention. I'd so, I'd seen like early reviews saying that this was like the worst movie of the year. Oh, really? Yeah. It, well, and it, it absolutely it was had not. it written all over it. Right. It looked like it was going to be absolutely terrible. But I mean, there's I've long believed this uh, like bad is just a quality. So something can be bad. Like I like I am happy for this movie that it was bad because think of it in the grand scheme of things. You could be so many things worse than bad. Like you don't want a person to be bad, but like moments can be bad, things can be bad, and in the grand scheme of things, it's ju- that's just like a part of that fucking thing. So this movie was bad. It was supposed to be fucking terrible yeah so this was i also think this movie was so like supposed to be bad like it is a movie they had about, to know when they were making it, it yeah, was bad. yeah it is a movie about a uh it's it's melissa mccarthy plays a detective who lives in a world where it's like half humans half puppets and the puppets are basically shunned from society mm-hmm. and there's just like a bunch of murdering going on of, of the puppet people and so she has to work with her former partner who is a puppet and it's just like it is the absolutely most absurd thing in the world and you knew that when you look at the at the trailers like it was basically like it's Sesame Street X rated and so it was it was supposed to be bad but I feel like it had its redeemable moments. There were funny moments in in the movie. Like there were parts where I yeah. laughed, and it's just like if you ex- if you went in expecting that movie to be anything other than bad, you were going to be severely disappointed. Yeah the uh, the big thing with me, uh, just a big surprise was I assumed it was going to be that the voices were going to be done by famous people, and they really weren't. Well, I couldn't figure out who the main guy was, like the main, what was his name, Phil, Phil Phillips? Yeah, let me see. Uh, uh, it says there's somebody, Phil Beretta, uh, Bill Beretta. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I don't know who that is. It's He does the voice of the Muppets? Yeah, the, oh, really? Yeah. So I think these are like Muppets people. Um, like, wasn't this a... Uh, Jim Hen- uh Brian Henson? Yes. Yes. Is he related? To- yeah, he's I have a, no he's idea. the chairman of the Jim Henson company. So like this was like an actual I'm sure Jim Henson feels fantastic about this movie. Well, I'm pretty sure Jim Henson's dead. Well, he is dead. Yes. He's uh so I'm this was like he's coming in his grave right now. <laughs> this was almost a an official Muppets production. Yeah. Well, there I know that there's uh basically if you get like felt puppets made they all look exactly like that. There yeah. must be some sort of uh, company or whatever because the uh, actually no, I, I think like the Henson people made the puppets in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Oh really? And here uh, in Boston, the Felger and Maz radio show every Friday they replay segments uh, using felt puppets, which sucks because that was an idea that I wanted us to do for brunch. And uh, we just assumed it would be too expensive. And then that ended up happening. Uh, those look like the same puppets, too. You know? Yeah, right. So I think that there's like just this one company that has a monopoly 
on felt puppets we should this is a this is a, a franchising opportunity for us i think we should uh undercut that company and be like hey we can make you felt puppets we, here's we should, a prototype yeah. looks like shit uh this is probably <laughs> what yours will look like uh it's also we could be kind of um like uh what is it social justice or something like we, we could we could make sure i'm that, always down for being that, an sjw yes yeah, so we could make sure that not everybody sees puppets the same way yeah uh where it's like if 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 somebody says hey all puppets look the same you say hey hey yeah th- that's not okay excuse me <laughs> that's look i know that i know like your parents may have been raised in a certain <laughs> time but i like to think they raised you a little bit differently uh shame on them this is what puppets look like and they're like but that doesn't look like a human <laughs> it, real good how do you think that puppet feels now it's not supposed to look like a human asshole. It's supposed to look like a fucking puppet. Right. It is what it is. Right. Exactly. Those uh, uh, could teach people a lesson here, a valuable lesson. Yes, was well, uh, social uh, justice puppet warriors. warriors, but warriors is uh, problematic because we're not necessarily condoning. It depends on like what the the war is. We we want peace in this world. We're uh, we're social social, uh, justice, social justice puppet puppet warriors protesters warriors warriors all about the words warriors warriors, warriors. I like peaceful protesters because that okay. harkens back to Dr. Martin Luther King okay. and Doug Baldwin, Colin Kaepernick, all the people trying to spread a equally positive as message important, fighting this... for the rights of puppets what's that said, equally as important putting them on putting them on the same plane tell you what fighting for the rights of puppets if we get doug baldwin on this cause then we will look a million times smarter because doug baldwin is a million times smarter than us and he is like when he's been on cnn and everything like that i'm like man i'm glad that i've had doug baldwin as a keeper on my team this is the third and final year i can keep him yeah i'm like actually i'm one of those fantasy owners that's actually proud to nice. be a, so i'm, I'm proud Congrats, to be man. in the doug baldwin business nice so if we can get we I should tweet at doug baldwin s- and sort of like, disagree with you there though like uh, doug baldwin's only gonna make us look dumber because he is that smart that's true. Haven't we had that conversation about Killer Mike? Like we. Oh yeah, we don't want to interview Killer Mike. Yeah, we were like, we should have Killer. No, we shouldn't because Killer Mike will make us look so stupid. Yeah, that's what. Uh, yeah, you. Yeah, you. You don't want. Uh, you need guests on the same sort of playing field, the same sort of stratosphere as you. And if you know, like the the only way that we could uh, attack Killer Mike type interview would be to do the Nardwar type of thing. Which is like we know everything. Yeah, about like you. <laughs> you, you're smarter than me, but we did our fucking research, so you can't be mad at us. That, that's always my go-to with interviewing. You can never accuse me of being like this guy is sloppy and has mailed it in. Right. I make it airtight. You can only have issues with me personally, which I'm fucking used to, or and I'm you're totally okay skills. with that. Yeah. <laughs> that, did we ever talk about that? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the notes that I had on uh, Happy Time Murders was that Elizabeth Banks, way too good for this shit. <laughs> Elizabeth Banks' career is so interesting to me because I think that everyone first saw her where she was like playing the hot girl in a movie in 40-Year-Old Virgin. And uh, I th- so she went, like, went to NYU. She's like this trained actress, which doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be great or anything. Yeah, or successful, but, yeah. Right. But... Uh, but she's she, got a fucking resume, she's man. She's, like, very popular, but she just always plays a fucking silly thing in movies. Like, that's... I thought that she would... I thought she'd be doing more. And I right. know that she's, like, producing a lot and doing things like that. Well, she did, I just um, thought that she was going to be perfect. kind of... directed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I thought that she would be more of a leading lady, which it's cool. Maybe her aspirations were to do more behind-the-scenes stuff. But she always just kind of has these bit roles where like, how has Elizabeth Banks not starred in a movie right. yet? Like even in, or one that we've even that in, anyone uh, would talk about. Even in Curb Your Enthusiasm, she played a fucking idiot. Yeah, that's who dated Larry David. Like I always wonder about the people in Curb Your Enthusiasm who don't play themselves because Elizabeth Banks is a lot more famous than people who have played themselves in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Right. Chris Parnell also uh, like played a person. Uh, Anton Yelkin. Uh, yeah died dead uh yeah it's it's weird because i feel like uh the larry david stuff seinfeld and curb and curb are like extensions of reality yeah so when you see somebody who is 
playing like themselves by name yeah. in the show and they're a, an idiot or like just an asshole, it makes you be like that person's really an asshole. Now it's sort of the same thing with uh with the crashing and Pete Holmes. Oh like, yeah, when Mulaney was an asshole on that show, I was like, huh, I wonder if Mulaney's an asshole in real life. Uh, I feel like. I feel like Mulaney does the thing where... Did I ever tell you the story of the time a uh, kid uh, rear-ended my friend's car in high school? No. It was the proudest I've been to another person. This kid who... Nice-ish guy. Sometimes could be a little bit of a prick. He rear-ended... He re- yeah. Uh, high school, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, peak. The, the juices were flowing. <laughs> Uh, rear-ended uh, this great sweetheart of a kid, everyone's favorite person. Re- uh, he rear-ended this great guy uh, in the parking lot accidentally. They got out of their cars, and the kid who rear-ended the good guy s- said, I'm sorry, and then slapped him in the face. And <laughs> I was so proud of him because he took the opportunity. He was like, here's a moment where... If I'm an asshole right now, it would be so fucking funny. Like, you don't always want to be an asshole, but there are little moments where it's kind of harmless to be an asshole, and it's really funny. I think that John Mulaney, just as a uh, as like a clever mind, uh, appreciates that. Okay. I don't necessarily have that skill completely. Sometimes I'll pick my spots wrong when I'll be <laughs> like, be an it'd be funny to be an asshole right here, and then you're an asshole, and everybody's like, DJ, right. her mother died, and I'm like, I just thought that if, if i uh, maybe poked the bear a little bit right now it would be a little funny sorry sorry i swung and missed but yeah i think that that's what uh john mulaney that's does unfair. uh but uh it seems like we've taken a little bit of a larry david detour definitely have more thoughts on happy time murders that we'll get back to but let's explore the larry david space for a little bit i watched uh clear history you started reading hitchhiking with larry david haven't really started it yet i got the book ah well that's that's a start for me <laughs> yeah okay that's a I, I've, I've started this paul mccartney uh in the 1970s biography i'm reading started it a couple weeks ago when i got the book <laughs> okay can't wait for the next part that's when I've. Uh, that's page one. That's when I'm sinking my teeth into it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Th- that's when you you can't put it down. When you've started to read a book is when you say, "Oh man, I can't put that book down." That's nice. a stupid thing. To, oh, have you read this book? Oh, what you start reading, you can't put it down. Like, well, that I can't do it because I can't have an uninterrupted six hour part of my life. I have appointments. Yeah, humble brag that it would only take you six hours to finish a book. To, nice try. How you're right. Like, how long does it take to <laughs> read a book? Ten dollars. <laughs> How long could it take? What could it take? Ten dollars? <laughs> I used to do that though. Like I would, like with like a Harry Potter book. Or oh whatever, yeah, man. If I had like a hundred, if I had like two hundred pages left, oh, I just fucking sit there and pour the through two hundred pages. It's the absolute worst when you get to the end because you can you can see the finish line. Yeah, and you're like, well, I'm not gonna read like twenty mm. pages. The next sitting, yeah. So you just fucking power through it, and by the time you get to the end of it, you don't even want to be reading it anymore. Yeah. Like it's not even it's not even satisfying to finish it. You're just like, oh, thank God that's fucking over with. Yeah, <laughs> man, you uh, you d- did we ever voice my book club idea? No, I I, I, I came up with it. Someone yeah. else on the podcast uh, wasn't as keen on it, and we didn't do it. I wanted to do a book club where we only read. Uh, the book versions of movies that they make after the movie comes out. I don't think that they make them after they come out. I think that they like reprint them so that they have like the no way of knowing. poster on the front. <laughs> no way of knowing. I don't know how many books no. have been made like off of movies. Oh, re- no, dude, that happens all the time. Really? Or at least they did that when I was a kid. Yeah, they would make like you could buy like D two, the Mighty Ducks are back as a book. Really? Yeah. They would just fucking make those shits into books. And I'd be like, look, I'm, like, I'm reading accounts. And she's like, you were, no, stop. So our book club idea would be we read the the book versions that, of movies that come out after the movie. Yes. And then we read them, we finish them, and then we say, eh, the movie was better. Yes, right. I Not to be a snob. <laughs> prefer the film. I much preferred the film version of uh, The Snowman. <laughs> Plus, it was the the book version of the snowman was like in the middle of uh, the book where they have a bunch of pictures. Sometimes yeah. it was just like that, except it was a bunch of blank pages. Yes, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, the snowman book would just be scattered blank pages. I'm like, I think they forgot to finish. Gotta this. say, the snowman book, a little light, a little light. 
not 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 the weight of of your normal uh novel but yeah uh i saw clear history and it was pretty solid. It was exa- It was just a... Is that the John Hamm one? Yes. Okay. It was like a, a 90-minute Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. Right. Yeah. It was unapologetically yeah. Curb Your Enthusiasm. Right. It, and it was done through HBO, so that makes sense. It's an HBO movie. And it was... I think it was like produced by Larry David or something. Like he had... Oh, no. It was written by Larry yeah, David. Yeah. It was like all Larry David. Yeah. It was... And the cool thing about it was, it was basically a custom-made-for-me movie, because John Hamm's glorious face was in it. Uh, it had a great cast. Everybody in it, even bit roles, were played by big shots. Right. Um, but the entire soundtrack was Chicago, which mm-hmm. is probably, like, as Van Morrison is to you, seemingly, mm-hmm. Chicago is to me. That's, like, my favorite band that i know nobody else my age likes yeah i know and it's i mean it's wild like does nobody my age like van morrison i'm gonna go to van morrison with you what oh Uh, oh, yeah 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 yeah. pavilion yeah the tickets are super expensive really yeah oh i I think they were like uh over a hundred bucks have they gone on uh, like uh resale or normally um i think like resale because that's why i asked if you could get me free tickets and yeah and uh i don't think you're going to be able to do that. But I, yeah. I was looking and they were fucking super expensive. Let me let me work on it. So I, yeah, I man, I, I have a, hey, I have a, I, I'm, I just looked it up right now. Uh, if, if I'm looking for two tickets, what's your budget per ticket per, per ticket? The minimum is three eighty five. What? Yeah. Holy smokes. Literally the minimum listed right now. Lowest price four thirty five each. Oh my! That's crazy. Goodness gracious! Like, is it? It must be like, hey, this guy's gonna die soon. This might be the last chance that you get to see him. So, yeah. uh, because that's why I want to go see Van Morrison. That guy's gonna die soon. Yeah, and you, I, I take it you you've not I've seen never him before. Seen him, no. Yeah, that'd be uh that'd be a cool thing to to do. It'd be a, a cool night for dancing. In the moon, as he says. Dancing in the moonlight. Dancing in the... Well, I was saying uh, moon dance was what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dancing in the moonlight, everybody. Know that one. Yeah, you do. That's that uh, that Fender Rhodes. It sounds beautiful. (laughs) Um, Yeah, uh, but that was a good movie worth watching. There were uh, a few big LOL parts in it. Amy Ryan was in it, and Amy Ryan's just great. Do I know she'll she'll put a Holly. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. See, I haven't seen this movie in fucking forever. So, wait, you saw that movie? What? Clear History? Yeah, I told you about it last episode. Yeah, I didn't know. I've told you about shit that I don't know about. <laughs> yeah. But I like I've described. To We've you... talked about happiness in this podcast. <laughs> what the fuck did you do? What? <laughs> but I, I described to you the entire plot of the movie. Uh, yeah, I guess I could know that without seeing it. But yeah, yeah, I saw it forever ago. You said it's about Larry David being unhappy and trying to ruin someone's life. I was like, yeah, so it's Seinfeld. Yeah, it's exactly. Kirby enthusiasm. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it in forever. I, I I should give it another shot because I liked it the first time, but that was before I was exposed to like l- the Larry David world. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm sure that I would like it more the second time around. Nice. I'm looking forward to you reading Hitchhiking with Larry David. I might dip. Uh, I might dip back into that the issue was i bought it on i think i had it on some sort of digital thing when uh all like the electronic books I don't were do happening that. and everything I don't and i that. was never in on that yeah. but for some reason that was what i had i uh i've done i did that with uh, aziz anzari's book and i think that, that was the last time that i ever did that because i was like this feels weird and gross i need the physical book yeah i don't know if i ever finished aziz anzari's book it was just like everything i read in it i was like it, it, there was there not, was some like, interesting information in it, right? But it was just all shit that I knew. Like yeah. I remember at that time, it was when I was going through a thing where I was really trying to like not text message at all because it's gotten more intense in my old age. But I've always had this aversion to uh, to text messaging where I'm like, this is weird and this is not how we should be communicating. There are certain ways in which uh, it's definitely good and beneficial right. to calling people on the phone, like when you don't want to talk the to people them. People become too reliant on it. Right. But like my, my thing back in the day was like if I was going to like ask a girl to dinner or anything like that. It feels weird to do it. I would text. call them yeah. and be like, 
hey, how you doing? And at this point, seemingly they're a person who wants to talk to and hear from me. So like I would talk to my friends about it. They'd be like, isn't that weird, though, to like call a girl and be like, hi, how was your weekend? And I was yeah. like, if you're weird about it, then yes, but... <laughs> Just well, don't be fucking weird about it. I think I think you have to kind of train them to accept that. Yeah. Because at this point in my life where like texting is ninety nine percent of all my communications, I feel like if I called somebody or called like a random person out of the blue, yeah, they'd be like, Yo, what is wrong? What's wrong? Yeah. 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 So uh yeah, I think you kind of just have to get them like get them trained that this is your thing. Yeah, I guess. But I mean, if it's so sticking with uh, that example, if it's a girl I'm talking to, they're already long trained. There are like two, you either have That's the true. gene where you can put up with me, yeah. or you are like, like you you either think You're the shit that I do is cool, gate, yeah. or you think that I'm a fucking nightmare. It's someone said someone said to me the other day. They were like, uh, "How many Twitter followers do you have?" And I looked and I was like, uh, twenty four thousand one hundred, and they were like, "Huh." I'd think that you'd have more. And I was like, I've had 24,100, I'm pretty sure, for like five years now. <laughs> it's like, this is exactly the amount of people that this can is put what up I with am. me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Every now and then, three or four will leave, and then three or four more will come, and then they'll keep swapping each other in and out. But <clears throat> you can either put up with me, or you fucking can't. By the way, we yeah. have been murdering it on the, the social on, media on game. Twitter. Yeah. Uh, because of that video... Of the the Mamma Mia Dunkirk thing, oh that yeah, got retweeted like five thousand times. Really? Yeah. Wow. I had a uh, great tweet I was going to send from the uh, brunch account, but I thought better of it. It was going to be uh, rest in peace, John McCain, <laughs> yes. and then like that would just be it. But like people would get the joke that like like he's, he's he has died. Like we make dead people jokes. Uh, in all seriousness, rest in peace, John McCain. Uh, yeah, know, war war hero. Uh, you know, politician served long, yeah, long time. Loved him in Die Hard. Uh, just big fan. <laughs> I um, yeah, I uh, he was like he was a politician that I fucking disagreed with. Like yeah. he was that was that that was you that used to be how it was. Like there would be yeah. the You'd politicians be like, that you like and mostly agree with, and there would be the politicians that like, man, I can't believe he fucking wants this. What an asshole that guy yeah. is. Fuck. But like, there's some like you but understand like, he's a fuck guy. That guy to hell. You understand he's a guy, yeah. and that he really, in his heart of hearts, is trying to do what's best for people. And you'd be like, man, how could you make that decision? I fucking disagree with that so much. Oh god damn it, John McCain. But you wouldn't be like, holy. fuck fuck we're all gonna die because <laughs> yeah. of this guy so i mean i like i was sitting around on like on sunday morning watching cnn shit of john mccain it's it's fucking sad i know that ellen is yeah, uh deal with her crying all weekend ellen is <laughs> <laughs> ellen is a john mccain stan and she honestly like her twitter feed was like one of the first things i went to when uh i saw that i had to break died. the news Really? Yeah, what an asshole. You had to Stevie Wonder it to her? Have you ever seen the video of Stevie Wonder uh, telling his concert that John Lennon had died? No. (laughs) Uh, There are people have differing reactions on it. I thought that it was like a sweet thing. I guess we can drop in the audio. I would like to say something. I'd like your attention, please. This is very important, and I want you all to understand that I am not a person who likes to be the of any bad news, but I think that I would like to, for those of you that don't know this, because I couldn't, it's been, it's been really hard for me to do this show tonight. But I did it in memory of people like this man, like Dr. Martin Luther King, and like someone that recently was shot. He was shot tonight three times. And I will tell you who, and I know that maybe you won't be able to sing this song with me, but 
The song is about people like him that have lived and died for the principle of unity for all people. And I'm talking about Mr. John Lennon. So I'm very sorry to have to tell you that. Uh, one could argue it takes him a little while to land the plane. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Not me, man. I, I was looking at my phone. I was like, ooh, John McCain died. Yeah, you're like... Hey, Alan. Rub the bandaid off. I've got some news about the death of John McCain. <laughs> it is t- it is final. It was a uh, <laughs> it was sort of a dick move because it was in, on like the middle of a Saturday night, mm. and we were at a brewery, and she was like, "Hey, John McCain died." And she's mm. like, "Don't tell me that." No way to get that uh, those Saturday night juices flowing. Yeah, really uh, vibing on a Saturday <laughs> right. night. Hey, all it's Saturday like, night. Ooh. These tunes just make me want to tell ya. John McCain has died. <laughs> this is terrible. All good Saturday night ends. All good Saturday night end. Saturday nights. Saturday nights there end we go. with your partner crying. Nice. I would make fun of you for uh, your difficulty with uh, plural words there. Nah. But your difficulty right there is nothing compared to everybody else. Stop fucking putting apostrophes in plural words everybody it's getting worse Jesus. and worse <laughs> especially now that like fantasy football is coming up people say like, hey which wide receiver apostrophe s should i draft <laughs> which wide receiver is should you draft that's an odd question I, the one that what re- sentence the one structure that really bothers me is the days of the week Yes. Like, uh, can't wait for Sundays. Ugh. Sundays during wait, football season. Right. Can't wait for Sundays what? <laughs> yes, right. For Sunday's favorite hour? <laughs> Been waiting all for day Sunday's for Sunday's nightfall? Sunday is night. Yes. Oh. It's... Because, again, dumb. we're fucking dummies. We're no I Doug know. Baldwins. <laughs> we're, we're, not your, we're not your Doug Baldwin. We're, we're just a couple of Pete and Deejes. Yeah. So. Also, I've been moving away from uh, Deej. Have you noticed this? No. I've been getting a lot more Dave of late, and uh, Brave like Dave it? specifically. Okay. And I don't hate it. I don't. I like to switch things up a little bit. I know it's like it's like we're like right now. I'm the artist formerly known as Prince. I know I'm going to go back to being known as Prince. But what Deej? Yeah, I think. I mean. For me, Deej matches your personality way better than Dave does. Deej is more of a little shit. Yeah. Than, oh yeah. Actually, I'm I'm not a little shit. Like too fat. To be I feel a like you shit. shouldn't move away from Deej unless you're ready to to become a uh, like a big J. Yeah. Uh, be like be like a, a boring ass. I was gonna down do the that. middle sports anchor. I, I, I was gonna do that if I went to the Boston Globe. I was gonna be David J Bean. Ah, nice. Yeah, that was gonna be. That look good on a byline. Yeah, right. Like yeah. that was begging for that byline. And uh, man, I had a weird experience this weekend. I was at a bar, and uh, I can't believe that places still do this. But the bar that I went to puts the uh, the newspaper. Up and they like pin that day's newspaper above the urinal in the bathroom. Yeah, it's great. Love it. I, it's such a weird thing, though. Yeah. And so I was doing that. The four still does it. Yeah, I, I was doing that, and I was like, ah, oh, Nora Princiati. It was like her her Patriot right. stuff, and I was like, it's so weird to me that like, oh yeah, she is like in the Globe. Yeah, right on the on the sports page. Yeah. It just like never hits me that these newspaper people who work for I just always think of the newspaper stuff as digital first. Yeah. And then yeah. I see the print version, I'm like, huh, oh, that's kind of cool. You just think of a newspaper as something that you don't get to see because right. you forgot your login thing. I still pay for a Globe subscription thing and I never can read any I still read f- five free articles a month because I don't know the thing. Uh Nora rules, by the way. Love Nora it. is, every now and then, I have uh, these meltdowns about the state of journalism and writing and everything, and I've probably had a million of them on here, because it just like fucking makes me sad that now writing has become this thing of, uh, it's more about, like, are you, like, the... Are you like at the cool kids table? Like there's this cool kids table of like, oh, this person's quirky and they have a personality. Therefore, they're a good writer. And I'm like waiting to read what the (laughs) fucking good things they've written are, you know? And like I – so I I wrote for WEEI.com, which is – it's not the Boston Globe. Great website, celebrating ten years, awesome, loved every second there. But like, it's it's not known it's not as a being beacon like of journalism, right? Like, it's not known as being this great thing. But I really fucking practiced journalism. Like, I w- I was a, a goofball from time to time. But I was like, 
I'm going to report things. I'm going to get things right. I'm going to like learn how to actually talk to people and interview people and learn how to fucking do this. Mm-hmm. And there are people there who are very helpful that let me do that. But like that's what I was fucking trying to do. Nobody's trying to do that anymore. Nora, Everybody's trying to be cool. Right. Yeah. Like Nora is a good reporter. Knows fucking like knows the sport uh, she's covering very well. Like has interesting thoughts and also has like a, a good personality, personality yeah. and is good on Twitter and shit. Like you can fucking be both. And I feel that most people these days strive to just be like I said at the cool kids table. Right. Like and and I, and, and I, I'm wondering like does Bill Simmons like does does he? Like who's the person that that like has a good eye for like these great up and coming people? Because seemingly, like people like Nora who can kind of do it all should be the the stars. I don't right? Know. Yeah. No, I I get it, and I think there's uh, there's definitely an element of self awareness that that people should have, and a lot of the times don't have. Yeah. Where it's like, hey, know what you're good at, and focus on that. Yeah. Like, and I feel like there are too many people out there now who are trying to sit at the cool kids table when mm-hmm. just don't have the personality for it. Yeah. Or the sense of humor or just like you're not you're not cool. <laughs> like yeah. It's, it's just like you have to figure out if you can do it or not. And if you can't, then find something else to do. Hey, make your own table. Right. Exactly. May, hey, uh, social justice puppet peaceful protesters, make your own table. That's a... That's a nice little. It's a good quote. That's could go on a it could go on a motivational poster. Make your own table. Yes. Brave Dave Bean of the Social Justice. Uh, what is it? Puppet, po- puppet, puppet, peaceful protesters. Pe- peaceful pro podcasting protesters. Yes, we're gonna need to come up with an with an acronym. Where it, you know what this sounds like? Like brunch is the social justice uh, puppet peaceful protesters podcast. That sounds like people's persons paper people <laughs> yes, done yes, the yes. myth. The people's yeah. person that, that we need a theme song we need a jingle that second one that they come up with so the first one is like the dun the mifflin the people person paper people the second one they come up with is dun the mifflin people's persons paper people those harmonies there are fucking sick like craig yeah. robinson if he like he definitely put like four hours into writing that little thing, yeah. and uh, I, I hope it's appreciated because that song is heat. I feel like Craig Robinson should ha- should be a late night guy. Yeah, like, instead of James Corden. Yeah, if it was if it was Craig, Craig Robinson, Robinson, Robinson at a piano. Yes, exactly. Where he could he could do this like the cool little fucking funny skits and like, yeah. work in a piano with his monologue and stuff, and then interview people. Uh, yeah, he'd be so much better. Did I tell you that? Um... Did I tell you that I saw Craig Robinson? Yes, you did. And he played that Dunder Mifflin And he was song. the highest guy in the world? Yeah, he was pretty messed up, and it was in Medford, Mass. And he yes. never stopped. Like, after every song, he was like, thank you, Medford. <laughs> <laughs> he never said Boston. That's it was awesome. so great. Like That's He was awesome. totally willing to make fun of the fact that he was playing in Medford, which That's was great. like as much a joke on him as I watched, anybody else i watched pineapple express this weekend at like three in the morning and it was i forgot how, movie, how great that movie was it's such a good movie it was a massive victim of expectations because that was what came out after uh like super bad when right. they were on that fucking huge run and pineapple express as super bad was coming out and as these good movies were coming out this was like the well pineapple express is their real passion project so wait wait for that shit and right. you saw it and it was like it wasn't a hundred out of a hundred, I guess. So you're like, oh, that's kind of disappointing. And now, whenever I rewatch it, I'm like, it's got the second it's best amazing. fight scene yeah. ever. It's With, uh, the uh, in in uh, what's his name's house in yeah, in Danny Kenny- McBride. Yeah, Danny McBride's yeah. house. The scene where the scene where he's holding the bathroom door shut and uh, they fucking break the door down and his head goes into the <laughs> sink and breaks yeah. the sink off the wall yeah. is so fucking funny. Yeah, so it, fucking funny. It's his uh, cat birthday or whatever yes i uh by the way i texted jeff this morning um jeff was very excited that in the song the palace father john misty sings maybe i'll get a pet learn how to take care of somebody else maybe i'll name it jeff uh there's now like a faction of father john misty fans who are buying pets and naming them jeff and uh guess who that's amazing for jeff 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 loves all things Jeff. Jeff knows that Jeff is such a fucking killer name. Yep. That name rules. 
It is. It is a very uh, like. It, it's good in all situations. Yeah, like if if the uh, was it Clickhole or the Onion that had it was a Clickhole. Like it's your man Jeff nine <laughs> yes, times. Yes. Uh, that wouldn't work with any other name. If it was like, hey, check out Paul nine times, you'd be like, I don't fucking care about Paul. Right. <laughs> oh, Jeff's in the mix. Hell yeah. I have a little Jeff. Give me a little Jeff. All right, let's uh, let's, let's go back to yeah, uh, Happy Time Murders. Happy Time Murders. Uh, my favorite part by far. It was the only part that I laughed out loud. Uh, the theater was laughing out loud at a lot of things yeah, that same. were not laugh out loud funny. But I guess if you're going to that movie in a non uh, social justice, peaceful podcast protesting puppet uh, paper people yeah. kind of way you're probably dumb and laughing at those things joel McHale plays a plays your typical uh, fbi, FBI takes himself too seriously hey well we're the fbi i'm the fbi this is not your jurisdiction it's my jurisdiction now fbi people say jurisdiction oh, yeah. so much so this is my case now yeah right uh <laughs> that's all that's that's a hundred percent of the FBI job. They just show up on the crime scene talking and go, about this is my case now. Talking about whose case it is, and seemingly, what's a what's a movie that paints the FBI in a, in like good, a good smart way. light? <laughs> like, oh, so the FBI is smarter than the people who know yeah, it. It's always the FBI showing up and fucking everything up, and then being and then turning it back over to local law, law well, enforcement. Well, it's very similar to. Um, so if you're like a like a beat writer of a team and you're there every yeah. day and, and something's guy and in. something's happening with a player and you know this player you know what makes them tick you've got a relationship with them and you're going to do this big story on the player and then somehow like a national reporter parachutes in and is like you don't get to write this story i'm gonna write the story you're like well i bet this guy's gonna do a worse <laughs> job because he doesn't really know this person right. he's not he's always just parachuting in and telling everybody they're off the case so that's what joel McHale plays and he's fine as that role but there's a scene where uh the two main characters philip phillips and uh melissa mccarthy's character are being uh not necessarily framed kind of framed but there is some question as to are they the bad guys in the fbi's uh eyes so they're coming out of a building, and the FBI is waiting for them. <clears throat> and uh, he's like, drop the gun. And the the puppet guy drops his gun. And he's like, you too, uh, Melissa McCarthy's character. Drop the weapon. And she's like slowly putting it down. And he's like, drop it. Put it down. And she puts Last it down. Time. And he's like, I'm going to give you one more chance. Drop the weapon. And she's like, I already dropped the weapon. And he's like, put it down. <laughs> Drop the weapon! And, like, her hands are up. She's like, what the fuck is wrong with this the guy? The guy's like, are you fucking blind? <laughs> yeah. she, she's, like, saying to all the other FBI people, she's like, can someone point out to this guy I've dropped the weapon? And Last chance, asshole! <laughs> that uh, was really, really funny to I me. I think one of the, the only times that I laughed out loud was uh, in the beginning of the movie, the, the puppet private investigator, Philip Phillips, gets sent to a sex shop to, like, interrogate somebody. Oh, yeah. And he, like, walks into the back of the sex shop, and there's just, like, a movie playing. Oh, God. And it's, and it's a puppet Dalmatian <laughs> whipping a firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> and the firefighter is just completely submissive and he's like oh yeah yeah, yeah give it to me and the puppet's like you dirty boy <laughs> i was like that's so fucking funny and then uh another one of the scenes that i laughed at was when they were talking about <laughs> pilafing <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah they were like you know what happens when a puppet goes mm. to prison they take out all his stuffing <laughs> and they replace it with rice <laughs> pilaf <laughs> And then they fuck it until it all smashes together and looks like mashed potatoes, yes. which is like, as as an Armenian boy, I appreciate that so much because there's nothing worse than like poorly made peel off that's yes, all like, like wet yeah, and, and it gross, looks gross yeah. and it like connects together. Yeah. Man, like nothing sloppy rice peel off. Uh, something I like to do for people. You, you're 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 important enough to me that I think that we're ready for this step. Uh, I'm gonna make you some peel off sometime, Ooh. and by that I mean I'm probably gonna have my mom make some All right. peel off. My mom makes good ass rice peel off too. Yeah, maybe we should have a mom peel off off. This is a not fair. My I would feel bad. My mom would smoke your mom. Really? Yeah, because your mom's Italian. Yeah, she's my a, mom. My she's mom's a good ass cook. She's a yeah, but does she dip into the other cuisines? Yeah. 
Like my mom makes Mexican mom's, stuff, mom's I know that it's going to taste chef. like like old El Paso stuff, which is great, but it's not going to taste like the authentic thing. Nah, my mom, my mom likes to spread her wings in the kitchen, nice. so nice. we could have a nice little peel off off here. What's she she using a lot of that uh, that uh, chicken stock in there? Uh, I don't even know what that means, but I don't know either. I think that's <laughs> like a that's like she a uses, medical I, term. I know she uses a, a good amount of a healthy amount of spinach. So, yeah, you're not supposed to be spinach and oh no, pilaf. It's so good, so good. Yeah, so 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 she makes pilaf like pilaf that you would get at uh, grass fields, probably. Yeah, they have spinach in the pilaf at grass fields, which is which is good. Right, I always get the pilaf at at, uh, at grass fields. Yeah, solid. <clears throat> I always do the steak tips and the pilaf. Okay, but yeah, yeah you're a big steak. Oh yeah, the, I do the steak tips, uh, scallops, and pilaf. Scallops. There's a there's a steak tip and scallops dinner that uh, that comes together and it's the best. Do you know that you're not supposed to eat two different meats at the same time? Do, well, does scallops count as meat? Well, like you're not supposed to eat like fish at the same time as eating whatever. Really? Yeah. Why? Because uh, they're broken down differently, so it okay. just like confuses the fuck out of your body, and it's probably going to either give you a stomach ache or whatever. But I- you you're not what? supposed to do a lot of shit. Yeah, right. You know, you're not I, supposed to swear. I make my own fucking rules. Yeah, and uh, I I teach my body who's in charge. You're not supposed to park I in the uh, curbside pickup only spot at Dunkin' Donuts, and I do that Ooh. every day. It's like having like a guaranteed parking spot for me because who's actually doing that? Who's doing the curbside pickup thing at, at Dunkin' Donuts? At Dunkin like, Donuts. Well, how much time are you saving? I know one of my friends uh, actually does that, and I think it's really really funny. I'm like, man, you you really got it all figured out, huh, pal? You're saving all that uh, time. Were there any other big funny parts of... I actually, I laughed at the... I was upset at myself. I did a like, smirk the, the coming at the, the coming scene. Yeah, man, it's so much funnier because in the context he, like, of the movie. Because he has... It was like the, the Tim Robinson thing. Uh, when he strings out in the, the episode of... What was it called? Characters? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where it's like five minutes of him like crooning and being yeah. like a Rat Pack thing and then losing it at the end. There was an edited version on YouTube where it's like 30 seconds of him crooning and then shit going wrong. Right, like you need the setup. You need the <coughs> setup and as, you need the context. Right, it's not as funny if it's, that lo- if it's not that long. Right. And in the uh, thing, in the movie, or in the preview, he's like, uh, <laughs> and that's it. And you're like, oh, kind of funny. And in the movie, it's like, <laughs> and they have, way, they have way more shots of the people waiting outside yeah. uh, in the in the lobby of his office. And, and they go into his office and come is just like yeah, dripping, dripping off the ceiling. Uh, what's his name was pretty good in this movie. Uh, Stanley from The Office. Uh, yes, but they they did the uh, Better Call Saul thing. They aged him backwards, which uh, messed me up. What, made him, made him younger? They made him way younger. I didn't think so. I thought he looked way older. He had a full head of hair. He looked, well, yeah, his, I think his hair was just longer. Yeah. He just looked way more unkempt, which I think is is sort of the... Uh, yeah, FBI right. type well, of thing. He's the he's the local police. Oh, yes. The FBI. Um, did you notice uh, our guy? Uh, Jimmy O. Yang G- was Jimmy in Jimmy O. Yang was in it. Not nearly enough. No, definitely yeah. not. Did he even have a line? Uh, he might have had one line. No, he's like the like the rookie cop or whatever, and he just he's just there to be made fun of because he's, yeah, wearing, he's a hat. wearing a hat. And they're like, you don't wear, actually wear the hat, you fucking dumbass. That's actually t- like you you don't see that a lot anymore. Right. If I were a cop, that'd be my look. Oh yeah, with the hat. Yeah, it's like uh, like some basketball players now wear the super short shorts. Yeah, I appreciate that, but they only get half credit because they wear fucking leggings underneath. Yeah, I know. and I don't care how much better it helps with like recovery and everything like that. It, you don't it look as good. Look. It ruins the look. Could you imagine how hot Jalen Brown would be <laughs> yeah. if he didn't wear leggings underneath his shorts? Um, you have the bandana on again. Mm-hmm. This I think I think you're like falling in love with the bandana. Check this out. I know it's a good look. You this is like, a this is a good look. Is that a is it those aviators? Or no, no, are, those are Ray Bans, huh? No, these are like some whack ass Prada <laughs> shades. Oh, okay, I got are they fake? a million years ago. What's that? Are they fake? No, they're real. Oh and shit! This is this is this is I am holding in my hand the silliest purchase I've ever made in my life. <laughs> those had to be like a couple hundred bucks, right? More than that. Oh Jesus I Christ! Bu- a, I bought them when I graduated college as. A graduation gift to myself because I was working when I was in college. I started working for WEI.com the beginning of my senior year 
and uh, I was making very little money, but more than a college student right. makes. Like it's, I kind of had a you job. Were rich, the, you were rich in, in your mind, right? Because it was like more than I was making more than like your your like uh, working college student right. thing would yeah. make. Like I was I was probably making a little more than minimum wage. Yeah. So I graduated college, and I was like, I think. I think I'm I successful. Of, yeah, I need a so pair of Prada sunglasses. I'm going to get myself a little gift. And uh, the only reason I went over to the Prada section was because Ari Gold wore these really cool sunglasses. Always a great that, guy to uh, model yourself after. <laughs> exactly. And I saw that they had them at the store. And I was like, I'm definitely not going to get that these. That is the douchiest story I've ever heard in my life. Today. Right. I, I went and I got a pair of Ari Gold I sunglasses. I got the Ari Golds. Yeah. That Jesus Christ. they were they, those were like way too flashy, but I just saw that they had them there, and I was like, "Cool!" I but I remember I didn't want to get Ray Bans because I wanted to have some sunglasses that not everybody had. Okay, and the reason not everyone has Prada sunglasses because they're, they're fucking too expensive. Yeah, they're douchey. These aren't no, these aren't douchey. They are, they're not so douchey, down the middle. but they're not douchey in the context of like what you're wearing right now. You have a headband on. You're kind of like. You're kind yeah, of sloppy. I was, this feels like the, the first time I've made these sunglasses work. I usually these are usually just my golfing sunglasses, so like, I wear them once a year. I think I think a really good look is when you are super fucking sloppy and like got like homeless chic going on, mm. and then you got one accessory that is nice as fuck. Yeah, and you're just like that sort of signifies. Hey, I could be doing better than this, but this is my fucking look. Yeah. And this is what I'm going for. Like a nice pair of sneakers with with some like sloppy ass clothes yeah. or uh like like sunglasses or a nice piece of jewelry whether it's like a watch or a chain or something. Yeah. That that is like a hey, I don't care, but I'm letting you know that you know I could what it's be called? Doing you know what it's this. called? And brace yourselves listeners because we might have the new big dick energy here. Okay. Rock bottom hot. Yeah, hell yes. Oh, is that something that you just coined, or is that like a thing that exists already? Yeah, we should uh, rock bottom hot. Rock bottom hot. Fuck yeah. Yeah, like uh, we should post like selfies like this and be like, mm, feeling rock bottom hot today. Hell yes. That I'm so into that. Rock bottom hot. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So that does it for happy time murders. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that that's the way we have to attack shitty movies like that. We Which just is sprinkle them in through like uh, forty five minutes of conversation about other things. <laughs> yeah, and we what else we we've come up with like a new uh, like a new political theme. Uh, we've come up with a new uh, way of dressing. This yeah, this like is a this is a hunt. productive episode. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to get to? One of the, one of my notes that I had is I was watching uh, House Hunters this weekend. I don't nice. know if you saw me tweet tweet about this. There I can't watch. So too sad when they. What? When they get it. When they get the house? When they kill the house. <laughs> oh, God. They're like, oh, oh I go, shh. Is that a. Oh, it's just a shed. Let I it go. Hate, I hate when the houses turn on each other. Yes. And uh, they, they cross each other. And yeah. And one, the, one of them never sees it coming. I saw an episode where they, like, pierced the house's leg, but. It like didn't really lose any steam, and they thought that like they got it, and they were like they got it, and like it was like a young house hunter, and he turned around to his dad, and he was like, "Dad, I got it, Dad!" And the dad was like, "Oh, let me see," and then the house was fucking there in a second, ate them both. <laughs> uh, I was watching House Hunters, and there is a fucking alarming amount of people on House Hunters or houses on House Hunters that have carpet in the bathroom. Ugh. Yeah, dude, it, it happens. If you watch an, like an hour or two of House Hunters, you're going to see a house with carpet in the bathroom. It is insane. Ooh, that's terrible. I don't know why anybody would want that. Other than like once you ta- when you're taking a poop, yeah. like, having, a nice, having a nice carpet to like r- r- rub your feet through would be kind of nice when, you, when you're uh, in, in, the, in the poop squat. Yeah. But like not when you not when your mind gets to wandering and you're like oh, there's definitely pee particles all up in this rug and i mean it's like if you smoke it gets on your clothes yeah if you poop it gets on your carpet like it's just like <laughs> well, the scent i don't know about and, that i don't know how and, you poop <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i've like, ever been like oh, well, like if you well, like poop on the floor well like if they don't like if like you're 
your significant other, your roommate or whatever, is out for a while and yeah, they're gone right. for like six yeah. hours and they, they forget yeah. to come and take you out, like you're going to go inside. It's the same. It's the, the same. poop on the carpet. <laughs> it's the same reason that you're like, you don't bring food into the bathroom. Yeah. Because there's, there's like, even though you're not shitting on the food, yeah. there is that shit's floating around. In the air. I've said this before. You don't want to contact it with it. I've said this before, but one of my top five favorite moments in 30 Rock is when Liz Lemon finds out that that Jenna and her ex-boyfriend slept together in her bed. And she goes, oh, come on, guys. I eat in there. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I mean, like. I think one of the the biggest appeals of house hunters is just seeing the weird fucking shit that people do with their houses because there is some crazy ass shit. I don't watch any shows like that, and I'm starting to think that I should. I was with a group of friends last night, as usual, and uh, they were talking about... They all watch uh, a lot of the same shows, and there's there's like a show called 90 Day Fiance that they watch and things like that. I got to watch those. Uh, I saw... My makeup lady at work has, uh, or our makeup lady, uh, no, artist, yours, yours alone. artist uh, at work watches uh, a lot of those kinds of shows. Mm-hmm. So I'm in there for like 10 minutes at a time just being exposed to those shows. And I'm like, oh man, some of these shows, some of these people. Sound great. Yeah. Uh, there's one where it's like, I, I got my big fat legs. They're so big. And it's just normal people who've got fucking crazy ass big legs. And that's like that their be your path to stardom. That's their cross to bear. Their legs are just fucking huge, and they won't stop growing. And they just—that's the show. It's just we fall around this person with these fucking nut bars legs. So like, where do you sign up? Yeah, uh, j- th- there's a show called Mad Men. Called it's like my big fat penis just won't stop being so big. <laughs> the John Hamm story. <laughs> 